Welcome to the show. The show is the Court of Public Opinion from the garage. Peter Clayton is behind the camera. It's Tuesday. I'm Jeremy Cordo. Thank you for joining us. Uh, Les Elicus, uh, our regular insultant. No, sorry. Consultant. <laughs> I couldn't help myself. Our regular consultant on Fridays. He'll be with us again on Friday. Um, most interesting guy, Les. He'd be interested in this. Um, 320 consulting staff at Price Waterhouse Cooper have lost their jobs. I suspect they didn't do anything wrong. And they have brought forward the retirement of partners as well. How many? I don't know. I've got no idea how big PWC is, but I suspect pretty big. I think they're feeling the pain. The other big three consulting firms will probably do exactly the same thing. I've never understood why a company with knowledge, executive structure, history, a great product, great people, has to get in an external consultant at great expense to the shareholders to do what their own people would have been well and truly qualified and trained to do. Management or consultants. But not both. That makes no sense at all. Government is, of course, the worst offender. It is the real problem. They spend a fortune on consultants. That's what the public service is paid for. It's what they're paid to do. Here is another election winner for the Libs, if there's anybody in the Liberal Party who listens or watches. Simple. We'll stop the billions that are wasted, spent on consultants. Not to speak of useless travel entitlements. And that goes for both sides of politics. But I must say to you on that subject that Bronwyn Bishop, she fell on her sword when it was brought to public attention that she had self-indulged to the point of getting a helicopter at public expense to go somewhere. I don't know what the pretext was, but she had the honour to just simply say, yes, you're perfectly right, that was wrong. I quit. I resign. But we, I don't think we have politicians with any honour anymore. Ethics. You know, old-fashioned word, isn't it? Working from home. I'd like to hear from you on that. Working from home. I'm told that the CBD of most of our major cities on a Monday and a Friday, is deserted, it's terrible, empty. You can imagine what the knock-on effect would be if that happened, considering all the businesses who rely upon a bustling, thriving CBD. You can't tell me that working from home is a good idea. I'm doing it, I'm doing it because, well, as you know, I got the sack from uh, 5AA. Uh, when in the um, um, COVID pandemic, they sent us all home. I never liked the idea of doing the radio show from home. I liked the, the, the constant, uh, the, the um, oh, I don't know what you'd call it. The familiarity, the, uh, the machinery, the whole thing that worked extremely well. So you've, it's like going out in radio and doing an OB. You know what an OB is? It's an outside broadcast. I've never liked outside broadcasts because you just, you, you're exposing yourself to a whole lot of things that can go wrong, a whole lot of variables, a whole lot of uncontrollables. But anyway, we, uh, we do our uh, Court of Public Opinion here on Facebook and as a posting, thanks to Andy Martin, and Peter Clayton. We do that from the garage, because quite frankly, these days, I don't think we couldn't do it from anywhere else, could we? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> no. I, I'm talking to a fellow, by the way, 
who's going to maybe, he's going to give me a quote on what it would cost to fly a clone, not a clone, a drone, drone. <laughs> a drone into the uh, garage and get an aerial view of, of the, the whole setup here as a, 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 a revamp or a reboot of the opener. What do you think? Necessary or not necessary? No, I don't. No, I don't. No, oh, I don't. I just, I'm no, just trying to be creative. <laughs> I'm trying well, to be creative. I can, I can stand up on a ladder and, <laughs> and take some shots. Oh, all right, all right. We'll, 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 we'll talk about it. I was just sort of trying to be creative. Uh, now, on Friday, just remember, uh, we're on the telephone. It's 0491 65 68 60 live streaming. JeremyCordo.com. Guests, phone calls, music. Um, well, it's a, it's a radio station, but it is from the dining room table. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, it's not uh, drone in, groan in, or moan in, it's phone in. And, and you're all wonderful. And I, we get all these calls. I used to get calls at the radio station, but they weren't from all over the world. This is more fun in, in, in many ways. I mean, that, I think, really, in all honesty, it's the future, isn't it? It's this internet global thing. NAPLAN has been run and won this week. Well, I want to say this week, last week, really. The three R's. It's all about the three R's. It should be pretty simple. But last year, last year, South Australia only had three schools in the top 100 why? There is no point in recording it, knowing it, acknowledging it. You've got to find out why. How could that be? Three schools out of the top 100. Is, is that a pass? Well, I'm sorry, not for this government and not for the teaching profession. Now, I don't fool myself. For a teacher, it would be a formidable task fronting kids who possibly are undisciplined and you're not allowed to discipline them and their parents aren't allowed to discipline them and the police are not allowed to discipline them. So what are you supposed to do? Teach them. Oh, well, good luck with that. You would have to admit that the whole thing about education has been on the wrong bus for a long time. The worst public relations disaster since the death of Diana. <laughs> this goes on and on. This is about the Royal Mother's Day picture of Kate and the kids. It is absurd. Oh, it's unbelievable. Talk about over, uh, overreaction. Oh, God. I've never heard so much rubbish in all my life. You're telling me that newspapers don't Photoshop, photos, touch things up here and there, and what the hell does it matter anyway? And, and this from two of the agencies, the news agencies, the biggest in the world, they have put the palace on the list of people who can't be trusted, along with North Korea and Iran. <laughs> Can you believe it? Do you believe it? I think the world's gone bonkers. Speaking of Britain, the Brits have banned the use of puberty blockers. Now, <sighs> puberty blockers. I can't understand how, it, how there is even a product or a, 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 a medication called a puberty blocker. Why would you block puberty? Now, this... This, these puberty blockers are allowed in some countries, including Australia. Why? Puberty blockers? As I understand it, puberty blockers stop the natural development of a child, a girl or a boy, and produce irreversible side effects. Why would anyone want to do that? Why would any government allow that? Why would any regulator condone that? 
One excuse is, oh, the child may be confused about his or her sexuality. Well, as you grow up and the hormones are running around, you get confused about a lot of things. And they say, oh, well, blocking puberty will help. Really? I'm not a, I'm not a doctor. But why wouldn't you leave nature and time to sort it out. I simply don't understand why any medical person, any doctor, any professional would prescribe puberty blockers or why any parent would consider it, let alone allow it. Jacinta Allen's Labour government in Victoria, she took over from Chairman Dan, most left-wing government in Australia, really. Jacinta Allen's Victorian Labour government is putting money into an artistic theatrical production. You can look this up if you don't believe me. The production is called Rape. Rape. This is a live stage show where a woman is raped on stage in front of the footlights. Now, there isn't a man involved, as I understand it. I haven't seen the show. But there's no man involved. She's raped with an instrument. Do you believe this? At the end of this instrument is a camera. The whole thing is projected on a screen for the edification, enjoyment of the audience. And the taxpayer is paying for this. The Victorian taxpayer is putting the bill for this production. This is disgraceful. You know, I'm not, I'm not uh, catastrophizing here, but what do you think? And maybe, you know, sadly, just in talking about it and thinking about it, maybe it's not even a first. I can remember, I mean, what is art? God, art is anything these people want to make it, I suspect. But I remember one festival of arts here in South Australia many years ago when there was a show, can't remember what it was called, but uh, I didn't have her on my program, but uh, um, Bob Byrne did, from memory. He was doing drive, I was doing mornings. Her name was Annie Sprinkle. And having brought this up, you may well have been in the audience. I don't know. If you'd seen Annie Sprinkle's show, I'm quite sure you wouldn't have forgotten it. Her shtick was to sit on the edge of the stage with her legs apart, hanging over the edge of the stage, and the audience, who were part of the show, I suppose, were invited to come up to the stage and with a provided flashlight, well named I suppose, flashlight, they were invited to inspect her cervix. Now, this is gynaecology, not theatre. I do well remember that, and I do well remember that uh, Bob Byrne was suspended <laughs> for something which I won't repeat. <laughs> I mean, not even here. Uh, he said something to Annie Sprinkle. <laughs> and Paul Linkson suspended him for a week. Or well, maybe it was Sue Fraser, I can't remember. But anyway, it, it was uh, very strange. Can you imagine when producers were selecting the acts or the talent for that festival of arts that 
you know, she would walk in and, and she would say, well, well, this is what I do. Uh, I, I show the audience my cervix. This is my show. What in God's name anymore is art? Is it anything and everything? It would seem so. I wonder, moving on to something completely different, oh, I might just uh, remind you about um, Jim Elder. This is the brochure. One of our sponsors, ladies and gentlemen, Jim Elder. Everything Jim does, by the way, even these little brochures for his in-between exhibitions are glossy and beautifully prepared. And if you get on his mailing list, you could almost frame his catalogues and his, um, his communications with you. They are works of art. This was about the Mackley Estate Collection Part 2, which is, it'll be, no doubt there'll be a Part 3 as well. But um, that was last Sunday. Lots of wonderful paintings by David Boyd and uh, Sidney Nolan, Hugh Sorey. Lots and lots of them. Robert Dickerson. Of course, Pro Hart. Bill Coleman. Anyway, I love art, but I don't understand it. But as long as I can see it, I can understand this. Can't understand Annie Sprinkle or The Rape Show. Can't understand that. But if you would like to get Jim on the line, you can call him for general inquiries on 8267 2869. 8267 2869. Or you can go to elderfineart, all one word, dot com dot au and uh, have a look at his website. Uh, the most important thing is if you have, he's always looking for interesting, noteworthy, international and Australian artists for his upcoming sale. There is always, not too far away, an upcoming sale. And if you're looking to sell, you couldn't find a better place to sell than Jim Elder's beautiful gallery on Melbourne Street, North Adelaide. Yeah, I was going to say to you a couple of seconds ago, have you ever wondered what real estate in Australia is worth? Well, I had the occasion to find out the other day. Thought I'd share it with you. People love it, and I guess I can understand why. The value of real estate in Australia is put at $30 trillion. Now, I think that's beyond understanding $30 trillion. So if you're having trouble finding a quarter acre block somewhere, this is the reason. $30 trillion. However would they know that? Calculate it. I guess the thing is that real estate is limited. There is a finite amount of it and they ain't making any more of it. But really, it's because we have made a commodity out of it. We've cut it up into little blocks and we trade it. Where that started, I don't know, but South Australia was started by the South Australian Company in England when people were looking to come here. You could go into a, an office on the Strand and you could say, I'll have that block. And you didn't even know wh where it was or what was on it. But you bought that and made your way to South Australia. Maybe even in the Buffalo. I don't know. 1836. We started to trade it. But for 60,000 years, the Aboriginals got on just fine, not owning a single block, just claiming they owned the lot. <laughs> Which just could be a better system. I don't know. What do you think? We've, we, we've got this thing called Torrance Title. It started here in Adelaide, in South Australia. Now it's all over the world and the most recognised system of its kind in the world. Actually, Pete, you'd like this. Dogs have a better system. What's that? Well, dogs have a better system. Whatever they wee on, they own. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. <laughs> but here's, here's something interesting too. Nearly 30% of real estate transactions 
here in Australia are completed in cash. You know, so much for a whole bunch of people worrying about mortgages. God, 29.9% of purchases of real estate in this country are without a mortgage. Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, people, people must just walk in and put the money on the table and say, I'll have it. I would have to think that most of the people who do that would be overseas or foreign buyers. No mortgage, maybe? No? Just got the cash. Here it is. Unmarked bills. I don't know. And the other thing, of course, about real estate is should we, this is a hoary old chestnut, should we be allowed to dip into our superannuation for the purchase of a house? I say yes, because I don't think you'll get a better investment. In the last five years, real estate has increased a massive 64.2%. 64.2%. Now, I can guarantee that I'm not an investment advisor, but God, let me rephrase that. I would suspect that superannuation in a similar period would not have shown a result like that. Yeah. True, 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 true. We gotta go. Pete's got that worried look on his face. How's the battery, Pete? Oh, that's fine. <laughs> What's the song you got for us? Look, I wondered, uh, you know, you were talking. I was wondering about showing that uh, artificial intelligence, just. Oh, the Jim Croce one you showed me? Just to yeah. show what's happening. And, and so this the is a song that damage can be done to the music industry. This is a song that Jim Croce did not record, did not sing, but they have taken his voice. Artificial intelligence. It's not his voice, but they have created it. Yeah, sounds on the like his Lightfoot voice. Song. Sounds like him. Yeah, I, I think it's probably wow. worth having a look at. Yeah, uh, it's the original Gordon Lightfoot backing. Yeah. And they've just changed Gordon Lightfoot's voice yes. to sound like Jim Croce. Jim Croce. What's the song? If you could read oh, my mind. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Great song. Yeah, great song. All right, I'll leave you with this, and then you'll enjoy that, I can promise you. It's a great song. I don't care whether it's artificial intelligence or not. The point is, it's a good song. Sung well. 19th of March, Sydney Harbour Bridge has opened. Hmm. There's still people trying to sell that. That off Hitler issues no... Well, it was a... Uh, a decree to destroy all German factories. This was at the end of the war in 1945, before he committed suicide. He wanted scorched earth. 1945. Princess Margaret separates, separates from the Earl of Snowden after 16 years. 1976. Princess Margaret was a wild lady. Let me tell you. Uh, the NASA's Mars rover, Curiosity, discovers further evidence of water-bearing materials, 2013. Uh, Kim Benyth, an Australian radio broadcaster, jazz musician, speedway promoter, and one of the nicest people it was my pleasure to have known for, well, a long time. He was born in 1920. He died on this day in 2011. Truly a beautiful gentleman, Kim Benyth. Wyatt Earp. Sheriff Wyatt Earp, the OK Corral. Pete, are you listening? Yes, I'm listening. He was often regarded as the centre figure in the shootout in Tombstone, along with Doc Holliday, the Clantons, cause of death. Well, he was 80, died with his shoes off. He died of cystitis. 1848. Not a terribly heroic way to go. <laughs> <laughs> no laughing matter. I like, I liked Wyatt Earp. What, what day did you say he died? He died 1848. No, no, that's not. Oh, no, I'm sorry. That, I'm sorry. You're right. He was born 1848. Yeah. He, he died in the, around 1930 or something. Yes, uh, yeah. you're perfectly right. Yeah. Thank you for picking up on that. He was 80. Had a good long life. Edgar Rice Burroughs, sci-fi author. Dies at 74 on this day, 1950. Ursula Andrus was born in 1936. Sean Connery, first day of shooting Goldfinger on this day in 1964. 
Adolf Eichmann was born in 1906. Actor Bruce Willis was born in 1955. Glenn Close was born. She was the one who came out of the bath with the knife. What was that movie? Yes, I, I t <laughs> it, it's terrifying. It well, puts you I off having an affair, well, wouldn't was, it? Uh, yeah, she was... Uh, it put you off having an affair. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa! It was 1947 she was born. Uh, um, John DeLorean, uh, the engineer, he was born in 1925 but died this day 2005. I never liked his car, I'm sorry. Harvey Weinstein, American film producer, was born in 1952. And the great Arthur C. Clarke, English science fiction author and inventor, died. 2001, A Space Odyssey. He was born in 1917, died 2008. That's it for today, ladies and gentlemen. Great song coming up. I'm Jeremy Cordo, Peter Clayton, and I'll be back tomorrow. Believe in yourself and thank you for viewing The Court of Public Opinion. You could read my mind, love What a tale my thoughts could tell you Just like an old time movie About a ghost from a wishing well In a castle dark Or a fortress strong With chains upon my feet You know that ghost is me I will never be set free As long as I am a ghost you can't see If I could read your mind, love What a tale your thoughts could tell Just like a paperback novel The kind the drugstore sells When you reach the park well, the heartaches come, the hero would be me. Heroes often say, You won't read that book again, because the ending just too hard to take. A movie star who gets born in a three-way spread into number two a movie queen to play the scene of bringing all the good things out in me but for now love let's be real never thought I could act this way and I Got to say that I just don't get it I don't know where we went wrong But the feeling's gone And I just can't get it back If you could read my mind, love What a tale my thoughts could tell just like an old time movie About a ghost from a wishing well In a castle dark Or a fortress strong With chains upon my feet The story always in If you read between the lines You'll know that I'm just trying to understand Feelings that you lack Never thought I could feel this way And I've got to say that I just don't get it I don't know where we went wrong But the feeling's gone And I just can't get it back